Thank you. Hi, sitting, sitting me here. Um, we're going to talk to you guys about genome enabled experiences, helping anglers fish responsibly at Grays Reef National Marine Sanctuary. The next slide, Sid. So a little bit of background. Um, Grays Reef National Marine Sanctuary is off the coast of Georgia and is one of the largest near shore live bottom reefs in the southeastern United States. Um, for those who don't know, live bottom is a term used to refer to hard or rocky seafloor that typically supports high numbers of large invertebrates such as sponges, corals, and sea squirts, as you can see in the pictures there. Um, the reef is approximately 22 square miles, about 14,000 acres, and 19 miles east of Sapple Island on, in the South Atlantic Bight. Um, the rapidly ledges, as you can also see in the pictures, can be as tall as six feet, and they lie about 60 to 70 feet in depth. Um, these ledges are very complex. They have lots of nooks and crannies everywhere, which provides great habitat for fish to swim around and find some critters. Um, there's actually 200 species of fish at Gray's Reef. So this lends itself to being an excellent fishing spot. Um, because of the depth of Gray's Reef, um, it lends itself to attracting deep water fish species like snappers and groupers. So therefore barotrauma or decompression sickness for fish can be an issue here. And trying to release fish back to depth can be an issue because of various um, physiological responses they have to that. Um, so because of this, we wanted to kind of educate anglers on how to best fish for these deep water species at Gray's Reef. Next slide. So um, the Nature Conservancy along with many partners were funded by the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation to engage anglers in using best fishing practices and to educate them about Gray's Reef itself. Um, so the objectives of this were to increase understanding of the practices to reduce deep water fish mortality. So these deep water snapper groupers um, also want to promote collaboration between fishermen and fishery managers using SIS and science. Um, fishermen are on the water way more than any fishery manager is. So having them on board is a great um, tool to use. We also want to create a space for open dialogue and promoting trust. Um, trust is a big issue within the fishery industry and understanding the um, fishing that is taking place. So we wanted to have that happen. So we were having some in-person workshops through 2019 and they were going fantastically well. Um, next slide, please, Sid. But then 2020, oops, other way said, sorry. Yeah, sorry. But 2020 happened and we all know what happened there. So we had to kind of nix the in-person part and we had to engage anglers virtually. So we needed some way to provide a dynamic experience for anglers to learn this information that'd be easy to follow, attractive, but also trustworthy. Um, additionally, because everybody was doing virtual learning, um, we need to have this information shared in as short as time as possible. So we're trying to think of what could do all this. And that's when we found Sid and we found this idea of creating experience online. So take it away, Sid. All right, thanks, Bob. So yes, we, we developed a, uh, an experience uh, completely out of the box, no custom coding, and uh, used it as, as Bob described as a way to quickly share this information uh, in an interactive and immersive way to uh, keep the attention of, of the anglers and provide them with information on, on how to uh, uh, leverage these best practices for fishing and, and preserve the, uh, the, the, the fish within, uh, within Gray's Reef. Um, but we also wanted to share additional information with them as well. So what you're seeing right now is our preparing to go section. So it's all about getting them excited about going out to the reef, seeing what kind of uh, fish that they'll be able to catch and the, the kind of um, marine environment they'll be able to experience when they go out to the reef. Um, and we used uh, the built-in card features within Experience Builder to embed a variety of resources. Um, so if you click on any one of these buttons here that says dive in, you'll get one of, uh, one of these pop-ups that Experience Builder allows you to do with an embedded video. In this case, it's a underwater 360 degree video um, that's captured at different locations uh, along the sanctuary to show you the kind of uh, marine life and corals and seafloor that you'll experience while you're out there. Um, one, just to get everyone excited about what's out there, but also to just share the beauty of this, of this sanctuary and why it's so important to leverage these best practices for fishing and preserve it for generations to come. 
In addition, we also embedded resources like story maps that would showcase the different types of seafloor that you'll experience across the, uh, across the sanctuary and what kind of fish you can expect to see and to catch within uh, each one of these types of seafloor. Um, so, uh, you know, again, just having a nice interactive, easy to, uh, easy to use application here, where as you go through each section of the story map, you'll see uh, the data uh, change and you'll, you'll see, um, you know, where these different types of seafloor are, uh, and of course, where the various dive sites and the data buoy are, uh, but also importantly, uh, we want to educate these anglers on where the research area is within the sanctuary. There's a lot of important research that's being done there. Um, and to make sure that well, we reduce any chance of that research being disturbed, we wanted to make sure that we showcased that pretty clearly in this application as well. Uh, the most important part about this resource is obviously sharing those best practices for fishing. So uh, not just how you reel in the fish uh, in a safe manner, but also how you um, release it, especially if it's a deep water fish, what kind of equipment you need to use, as well as what some of the uh, rules and regulations are uh, throughout the sanctuary. Um, so we were able to embed these buttons on top of really nice images that you know catch the, the eye of the users and kind of keep them excited about the kind of experience they'll have when they get to go out there and fish. And so as you click on each one of these resources, you'll be uh, prompted with another pop-up with information uh, with a graphic, uh, like in this case, kind of showing you uh, what kinds of things a fish might, uh, what kind of signs a fish might give you if it's experiencing barotrauma, um, how to uh, alleviate any stress that that fish is experiencing, and then of course, how to safely descend it back to the, the depth that it typically uh, resides within. Um, so all of this information is kind of, it's, uh, bite-sized information. It's easy to uh, easy to to go through, um, and it's quick and easy for you to kind of toggle between all of the rules and regulations, and not feel like you're going from you know website to website or endlessly scrolling. Um, so re really easy way to get the information. Uh, as Bob said earlier, we have the uh, citizen science programs, which are providing these resources like the SciFish app or My Fish Count um, that help anglers uh, log their catches and, and other information that can then be given back to the science community to understand the health of, of the reef. So we've provided resources on how to use the application, who you can reach out to for help, and of course, how to download them. So kind of using some of the embedded features here, we're allowed to actually um, hyperlink these buttons, which will take you to the app store so you can download the applications. And then finally, a call to action. So we're sharing these best practices um, to help fishermen understand, you know, how to preserve the fish and the species at the reef. Um, and of course, the, the trust aspect, so showing them the partners that were involved within this, uh, within this effort. Um, and with that, I'll pass it back to you, Bob. Thanks. Thanks, Sid. So the biggest thing is, was it effective? And the answer was a yes, a resounding yes. Um, it was created, this content was created by anglers for anglers. So therefore, people really trusted the information and were receptive to it. We got fantastic feedback on the design and usability of this experience, way better than a story map. Um, all of our partners are promoting this um, product through their angler constituents, which is fantastic. And biggest, there's interest from other natural marine sanctuaries to have a similar experience made for their sites, which is really, really good news for us. And with that, Sid and I both thank you so much for listening to our presentation.